presidential candidates visited a North Texas church to talk about their faith, and they also talked about public policies. Yeah, there was a huge crowd there. More than 7,000 people attended the forum at Prestonwood Baptist last night. Each of the candidates had 10 minutes to speak, followed by a one-on-one -on -one Q and A with the church's pastor. I think we need more prayer in public life, not less. Not, not because we want to exclude people, but because we want to give people the opportunity for contemplation. In the 2012 election, 54 million evangelicals didn't vote. It's a majority of evangelical Christians. If believers are staying home, if we are allowing our leaders to be elected by non-believers, is it any wonder we have a federal government that is assaulting life and marriage and religious liberty? Noticeably absent was frontrunner Donald Trump. He was invited but did not accept. Since this was not a debate, the candidates didn't actually interact with one another on stage. Democratic candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders were invited to take part, but they did not accept that invitation either. Brett Baer with Special Report joins us this morning. So Donald Trump still on top. Uh, what, what are you thinking? What, what's going to happen here? Well, wow, that's a good question. Jenny and Lauren, good morning. Uh, Donald Trump on Fox News Sunday this weekend. Uh, one of the interesting things that happened in those exchanges with Chris Wallace was a uh, doubling down of comments he made Friday to Bloomberg about 9-11 and George W. Bush and saying that the country was not safe under George W. Bush because 9-11 happened and saying that a 9-11 would not have happened, he says, under a President Trump hmm. because of strict immigration policies. Now, that would raise a lot of eyebrows and um, would stir things up. But in this environment, it does not seem like uh, this is going to cause Donald Trump that much uh, problem. In fact, his poll numbers uh, have continued to, to rise, uh, despite many controversial statements, obviously. Right, so Trump wasn't here in town. We just mentioned that because he was on Fox News Sunday. So uh, either way, our, our viewers here in town got to uh, enjoy that if they wanted to watch. And also, let's talk about this. Uh, Hillary Clinton, just uh, you know, ahead of this testimony, regarding Benghazi, how damaging could this be for her? You know, the, the preamble here has not been good for Republicans in that you had House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy saying that the committee was taking down Hillary Clinton's poll numbers. You had another Republican saying it was a political effort, another whistleblower saying uh, they were going after Hillary Clinton, all of which the chairman, Trey Gowdy, denies, but that sets up this committee uh, testimony on Thursday and there will be a pretty high bar for Republicans to get over to be fair and substantive and also do something new with all of the emails that have come out since her last testimony. All right, and then, and then you got Joe Biden who's still just waiting in the wings wondering. I, I, that seemed like all weekend long cameras were just following his every step. Just trying to figure out if, if yeah. he's going to announce something. What's he going to say? What's he going to do? I know. Really? I think, I think <laughs> last time I was filling in for you, Lauren, I want to say this was a couple of weeks ago. Brett, we were sp speaking to you, and I asked you that same exact question. So, so are we going to hear about Joe Biden running, and then we're asking the I mean, same come question again? On. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's really been drug out here. I mean, it's really something to watch, and that uh, the still the going bed in Washington is that he's going to run. Uh, but when will that announcement happen? And when it happens, will it be anticlimactic? Because right. we've been waiting so long uh, to see it. I did want to tell you about one breaking news thing, and that mm, is sure. that Donald Trump and Ben Carson have asked the Secret Service for protection, and because of oh. specific threats against them, they will get it. Starting this week, Donald Trump and Ben Carson, the only wow. two on the Republican side, uh, getting Secret Service protection. And I had heard, Brett, that Ben Carson initially did not want the, the Secret Service and did not want that protection, and this is a, a change for him. Yeah, so it has to be dealing with specific threats. The campaign right. went to the Secret Service and requested it. Uh, this is rare for candidates this early in the yeah. process. Barack Obama did get it uh, back in 2007. Huh. All right, Brett Baer, thank you so much. Appreciate it.